one amazing series of YA novels, an insatiable thirst to relive the glory that is K.A. Applegate's literary masterpiece. This is Phantomorphs, The Dork Bajir Chronicles. Hello, and welcome to the Dork Pajir Chronicles, a Phantomorph podcast where we read through the Animorph series one book at a time, then talk about it every week. Today we'll be talking about Animorphs number 16, The Warning. My name is Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the expert. Uh, I'm Brayden, and um, I don't... Guys, I just don't have a lot to say after that fucking Jake almost dying thing. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, a, I just didn't know what you were referring no, to. No, I, I, I get it, Brayden. It's a, since becoming a vampire, I have come to have a deeper understanding on death. And it's um when mortals come so close as Jake did in this episode, uh, it's horrifying, really. And it does something to the psyche. And even reading about it really... Uh, affects you i've noticed and um anyway that's why the tv show the good place is a thing because people are obsessed with death <laughs> oh my god two mentions of the good right. place today god damn it is that, that what this is gonna roundabout. be so this whole episode is actually the good place episode um jake goes online to uh the good place fan site and finds out that I'm gonna Janet straight up interrupt a uh, Tessa gonna, style yeah. and just be like, it clearly says in the show notes, plot breakdown by Mikhail. Yes. Yeah, but you were gonna talk about the all important good place subplot. I was so politely I waiting for you to stop rambling. I want to get that out of the way. <laughs> also, can I just say in the show notes, you call this book Animorphs number fifteen? Oh yeah. Whoops. So. Fix. That Who's was the fancy least. Now? That was Who's the least enthused. Now? Oh no, I've ever heard Mikhail. Just like, <laughs> okay. oh, what a what a snafu. I mean, <laughs> it's rare that we hear him get above a monotone. Anyway, I know, isn't it? So, oh, come on, come on. All right, all right. That I'm sensory jump right deprivation today. chamber really does things. To <laughs> it your just takes of- all <laughs> of his senses away, including his sense of humor. Oh, but Jake Googles Yerks and finds a chat room dedicated to uh, outing them. Maybe yeah. not outing the Yerks, but maybe just like just discussing. Like raising, awareness. He, raising awareness. He, he raising awareness. Yeah. Googles Yerk and he. No, really, it's the 90s. He asks Jeeves Yerk and finds asks only one Jeeves. result. And uh, I think that's suspect because for sure this word was used in a couple live journal porns and like. Um, like my Yahoo GeoCities. Also, if you think about it, like, how would they know how to spell? Like, how would there be an agreement <laughs> on how to spell Yerks? Right? Oh, that's like, true. That's a good question. I think have no idea how to spell it. That's a what very if he good just question. tried all kinds? What if he found out that Yerk is actually spelled J E R K? Like, oh uh, my God. It's like got those- like Spanish, uh, like a Spanish accent on it where the J is pronounced like a Y. Like one of those idiots who pronounces <laughs> Cthulhu Jerk. just Thulu. Oh, the C <laughs> is silent, you pleb. Eat my Anyways. whole butt. Okay, but sidebar, I saw a really adorable thing online where somebody spelled Cthulhu K-A-H-T-H-A-L-U-W. Because uh. they'd never seen it spelled before. All right, so they find a bunch of shit about Yerks on the internet, and they oh, decide man. to. Um, that dialogue. They find, they find the or well, Jake finds a chat room. You didn't even start with the goof. Wait, what was the what was the are you- the opening goof is that Jake teaches you what the internet is and how to log on. Yeah. Um, and then he says that some computers will tell you you've got mail, which has never happened to me. But I've also never used the email. That was based in the computer. I've always used an online email. Um, and then Marco, under the guise of Cassie, said that she was super hot for Jake. And Jake said that, uh, well, I, Cassie, I can't date you until uh, I find Marco a girlfriend. And we all know that's never going to happen. 
That was pretty um, sick. Oh yeah, because he knew. I also that was a real Marco, Marco moment. Would love. That was, I'm, that I'm was sad great. that I left that out of the point. The whole ugh, okay. That's an irrelevant <laughs> detail to the plot. Yeah, yeah. that's well, just the format, man. That's Tessa's I left bit. It out on Opening purpose. goof, plot A, plot B. This is something that Brayden started back in like episode four. No, and the goof is a caper, not so just like much. the goof. The goof is a caper. It's not just a conversation people have. Uh, I think it's just like the Amazon, goof. the Amazon cafe. That was a goof, right? Going to the concert. That was a goof. Talking about Baywatch. Not a goof. Uh. Anyways, uh. I got had a conversation with Catherine and Michael, and they. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh, yeah, they they let us know about what the goof actually is. Right, I forgot about that conversation that you live streamed to me. Yeah, uh, that I live streamed to you only and to no me one else only from your <laughs> yeah. bathroom while you were having it with Catherine and Michael. They were showering. Fans of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were showering. Um, Mikhail was taking a quick dump. It was a couple <laughs> lawyers there. A couple um, of lawyers, the, just making sure it was all above board. <laughs> we were talking about the Animorphs hosts. movie. It's oh, fine. spoilers. Uh, um, uh. Anyways, okay, blah, blah, blah. They find the chat room. Uh, they get together and talk about it because uh, they're like, oh, what could this possibly be? Is it real? Who knows? Like, there's no way to tell who's actually, like, baiting people in. There's a lot of conversation about, since we're focusing on details that have nothing to do with the plot but are just entertaining, there's a lot of conversations about like, screen names. Because uh, Jake's screen name is what is it? B-Ball Boy 23. No, it's just B-Ball, B-ball 24. Boy. Whatever. It's um, lame. Because it's very how many early points 90s. he got in basketball. Yeah. Um, and they decide the only way to like really figure out what's what with this chat room is to find out who these people really are, which like like by accessing like the server and their IP addresses essentially. But it's like, <laughs> I mean, I kind of have a I have a problem with that like on a moral level. But. <laughs> well, yeah, they're they're not fine with like morphing humans, but they're totally okay with like looking at your yeah. identity. What are they, Agit Pie? Am I right? Ah, Topical ah, net that neutrality that reference. Oh, oh boy, this um, episode's going to be whew. released at the end of February. <laughs> February, indeed. Fe- February. Yeah, um, Mark, uh, uh, Brayden, you want to take that one again? You want to take no. that? Take two. Fe- I don't know. Fe- February. I thought it was perfect. All right. So they. Okay, this is kind of weird. So the the what is it? World? No, web access. Web access America. America. That's the name of the internet service provider. So presumably so it's like aol where like it used to be like browsers and providers were the same thing kind of yeah um way back when. anyways the headquarters for waa is not in the city that the animals live in so they have to fly there but it's only like an hour and a half flight or something so they can morph st- and fly basically um so on they a plane, fly not, just flying, yeah. not just flying by birds it's too far to fly by birds oh yeah sorry i should make that clear because uh, it's a possibility it is a possibility <laughs> flying, yeah it's too far to fly by birds so they more flies and hop on a commercial flight to wherever this headquarter is uh pretty nasty jake gets swatted which is also like how Brutal. do you swat a house fly like yeah that's those hard fuckers to do, are right? fast so jake must have gotten well distracted. i mean not if you're i mean not if you're not actually a house fly and just like a human boy who's still kind yeah, of figuring out the instincts they have yeah. the instincts so obviously he wasn't tapped enough into them and he was too busy trying to think of uh that is exactly good what jokes. i just talked about i whatever <laughs> all right children come on uh <laughs> Jake and Cassie, after they get off the plane, uh, Jake and Cassie are like, I have a little aside and it's a little, like, Cassie's like, it's okay to be scared, Jake. And Jake's like, a leader can't be scared or at least can't show it. She's like, you can be scared with, it's, I hated it. Well, there was I hated this, it. I think Mikhail my, is what really I going out of his way to it. hate on the Cassie Jake <laughs> shit. What I really hated about it was like, Cassie was like, hey. You can share your feelings with me. And then Jake's like, I need to be the leader. I need to be tough. Well, a leader also doesn't whine like a bitch. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. fuck, Cassie, you came to him and asked him <laughs> what was wrong. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, man. Uh, also, like, I think it's not so much that I hate Cassie and Jake. It's just that I hate when, like, Cassie characters. Cassie and Jake is actually really great. Yeah, I think it works well. I, I think I don't like it when characters in books and movies, like, 
openly discuss their feelings, which sounds yeah. weird because in real because life, Mike, I actually Mikhail really appreciate that. never discusses that. his feelings, oh, so God, he's just so uncomfortable feelings. when people do that. No, it's just like it, it leaves no room for the reader to interpret what's going on. It's like, we know Jake's scared. I'm not, you don't have to beat me over the head with it, but I guess it's for kids and whatever. It's for kids, but I also yeah. think it's just, you know, I, th- I thought it was a really interesting conversation because it talks about, like, um, this was laid in a like the seeds were already planted in the forgotten unless you've forgotten about it or dirt but you know jake's uh, big struggle throughout the series as we're seeing is being a leader and how to be an effective leader Mm -hmm. and like he made a bunch of bad calls in book 11 and this is his next book book 16 he makes a couple more bad calls and he feels bad about it and he's trying to figure out how to be a good leader and also not get himself killed and also how to keep everybody being okay. It reminds me of the Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't start a new story. Okay. We t- <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Save it. We can totally talk about it Oh, later. but I'm probably going to forget. Uh, exactly. That's what I'm counting on. So Jake, Cassie, <laughs> Rachel, and Tobias decide uh, that the plan is... Well, I should say Jake decides that the plan is that those four animorphs will distract the people at the headquarters while Axe and Marco will hack into the computers because I guess hack Marco away. would be help would be you helpful need to have, somehow. Like, four hands on a keyboard to hack well, into a computer, Mikhail. I've yeah, seen that definitely. documentary. Pretty Marco's pretty handy at computers. I mean I could see him being helpful in like, oh hey Axe, you have to use a mouse like this. Like that <laughs> that actually is helpful. He has to translate some of the old fashioned technology he for probably Axe. is like the best with computers out of all the Animorphs except Axe. So Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's true also. That's true, Because yeah. his dad uh, works in the industry. They talk about this a couple times. And it's genetic. Knowledge is genetic. Anyways. Well, just, um, yeah, knowledge is genetic. And that's why my <laughs> parents are vampires. Well, him and his dad bond over computers. That's, that's an established what I mean. fact. Yeah. Mikhail does have to act like I'm an idiot. Like, his, his dad brings home all the latest technology <laughs> okay, okay, and they well, talk about Tessa, it. Like, Tessa, come on, Tessa. Mikhail. Let's not let's not get too defensive about treating each other like idiots. That's eighty percent of our podcast. God, this is podcast. another example. Another <laughs> example of like I'll say something and Mikhail will be like, "What? That's dumb." And then Brayden will say it in different words, and Mikhail accepts it, and that's what the patriarchy is. That's because Brayden gets all the words right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sick of your guessing games. You men are so mysterious. What do I say to hack into your minds and make you We're understand? We're communicating. Me? We're communicating telepathically through our scrolls. Oh, I get it. You'll, you can't do that while well, you're out of morph, though, which means you guys are in morph right now. My scrolls are actually is women. Never more stimulated than when I'm talking with Mikhail. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Telepathy sits is right in the scrotum. Okay, can you plot, 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 plot? <laughs> they find out. They find out, or Axe finds out pretty much, that, um, like, they find out the addresses and names, essentially, of all these people. Uh, the only one that's, like, really interesting is one of the people, Fighty777, I think, mm-hmm. is actually Joe Bob, Joe Bob Fenister. No, no, the no, guy no, wait, who wait, wait, wait. You, you mispronounced it. It's actually... Fenestre. <clears throat> a Joe Bob a Fenestre. Owner of a web access America. <laughs> that is That's exactly true. how I pictured. His Brayden name just being cracked. Pronounced. He just cracked the puzzle that uh, the city that the animorphs live in is actually the city in the Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> Anyways, uh, every uh, he's the guy in the cracked my animorphs puzzle. That's Joe K-A Bob right fa- now. That's Catherine right now. Joe Bob Fenister is the guy who owns and runs Web Access America. So okay, that's but actually, obviously... I called it Fenestry as a kid. Is it Fenister? I mean, it's not English, right? So you can probably say it however you want. <gasps> I couldn't stop thinking of defenestrate, which means <laughs> to throw someone out a window. <gasps> I knew that. Yeah. It's weird, though. I don't know why. I just could not stop seeing that. Uh, wow. Anyways, they find out it was him. They think it's very strange. Like, why would he do that? They also find out or like talk about specifically that the user Gump is a real kid mm-hmm. who thinks his dad is a yerk and is going to talk to his dad they about being a yerk. Out, yeah. yeah, that's going to come up later. I didn't really care too much about it at the time. Um, they decide, rather than help Gump, they decide that they should infiltrate Fenister's <laughs> mansion. Don't acknowledge it. Are you done? Don't acknowledge it. You can keep going. <laughs> you can just cut all out. 
sound my audio and keep going. Uh, if you now are a fucking professional. All right. They infiltrate the mansion by doing a series of dumb shit, but they basically find out it's really heavily defended. Uh, so Jake, like, insanely fast, flies to the gardens as a peregrine falcon. Yeah. Uh, acquires a rhino by landing on its back as a bird, <laughs> morphing out into a human, and then hilariously acquiring it while being, I can only assume, spread eagle on the back of no, this No, he falls off the rhino. rhino. That's true, actually. He does fall off. <laughs> That's a funny image. That was pretty Anyways, <laughs> It didn't yeah. turn out to matter like at all. But no, it, it didn't fun. matter. They could have had that rhino morph from the beginning, and it wouldn't oh, have made a difference. Uh, I should anyways. Have <laughs> Anyways, Jake morphs a rhino, and he basically just like pl- like plunges through gates and, and dogs and kills a lot of people, yeah. oh, probably. Yeah. Uh, Marco and Jake is a big Tobias? fan of the death penalty for dogs. Oh, one critical thing. The reason why, after they find out it's so heavily defended, why they still keep going is because Axe and Rachel, who are in bird morphs, like bird of prey morphs, uh, they get captured. Yeah. So now they don't have a choice. They have to go save them and they're running out of time. That's where the tension is in most of the book or the second half of the book really is like trying to save them because their morph time is running out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anyways, blah, blah, blah. They run through this mansion. They find a lot of crazy shit. Uh, Jake thought speaks to them to morph out. Even if people are watching, Uh, they finally find Joe Bob Fenister. Who's in like a creepy, I pictured it as like a, batman-esque like secret room kind of thing yeah oh yeah for Uh, sure and he had axe and rachel in biostasis biostasis, which just means like you're stunned and i guess the morph clock doesn't matter yeah uh so blah 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 their morph counter is not counting down so even though they were thought they were running out of time they're actually fine uh uh, no, the I, think their morph, I think their morph count still counts. They're just not dead. They're no, there's no way. Because they were like, we're at zero minutes, and then 30 minutes later, they morph out again. Uh, yeah, but that's like Tobias guessing at time. Axe is 100% accurate um, with his time. All he's of the an Andalite Shorm. Guessing. He's an Andalite Shorm, so that guarantees... Knowledge is hereditary and also Shormitary. So... Um, you. Warma? <laughs> 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 bird shawarma, um, my anyway, bird so shawarma, my 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 yeah, woo. <laughs> that does rhyme, sort of. Um, <laughs> so they confront Joe Bob. They find out he's a yerk, actually, because they the, Jake had said like a controller. Yeah, they said that like uh, Jake said, "There's no way he's a controller." Like they wouldn't. He had some really dumb logical. They would have like horpagers like, just out in the open, and they would have Drake yeah. beams. It's just like, well, also, this guy a had a Draken point. beam. No, it isn't. They shoot at them with regular guns constantly. Yeah, but they all... Okay, Jake's point was they're probably... These guys aren't... Con- the guards aren't controllers because they're not they, backed up by hork Yeah, But they like, were guards outside the house. Yeah, Why would there but be hork out in the open? in the open? middle of nowhere, so they could run the risk of having hork and people not seeing. Because they probably have air control, and they don't, ma- like, they don't, they probably, like, block, uh, you know, you actually have a way better point than I'm making, so never mind. Edit this out. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyways. Uh, so they find out he's a yerk, and he actually reveals that he is the yerk that we learned about in hork Chronicles, yeah. which is... Esplin, blah, 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 who fucking cares, but the other twin, so Visser 3's I twin care. brother That's is the sweet, guy. Yeah. I, thought that was really cool. I thought that was awesome. Too yeah. bad it doesn't matter about um, this. Spoilers. Which is like, that's one thing that um uh is kind of, a, it's a much cooler reveal when you read it the order that we read it. Um, Like, how the order that the books were written, you find out this reveal, and then in hork Chronicles, uh, in Visser's point of view, he like mentions offhandedly his twin a couple of times, and it's not a thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas this yeah. time, it's like you already knew that this was a character, and then now you found out. Oh, damn! He's the guy who invented the internet. So to Al Gore yeah. so to over here. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so there's even more crazy shit happens after that because he reveals that uh, he can survive without Candronas yeah. because he found out a way that involves a lot of work and like physical 
alterations, I guess. But he can eat other Yurks and survive off of them. And at, and that's why he, it's pretty crazy. Like, it's quite a twist. Also, that's why he was on the chat room was to, like, lure controllers to into lurk for his yurks. traps. But then we find out, too, and this is why the Animorphs would even care about this, is that he kills the hosts. So he's murdering humans. Yeah. So he's a serial killer. Yeah. Uh, and Cassie has her whole moral dilemma. And I mean, whatever. I, I feel like they could have just killed him. Like, it wouldn't have changed anything, really, mm-hmm. in my mind. But um, well, anyways, that's like the reason. the point, they let him go because in that moment, they didn't, they decided to, they decided to. They did not care. They wanted to go. So they did. He, well, I think it's he had also the fact that uh, he had power over them because he he still had Rachel and Axe captured. So, like, even though he's like basically, I don't care. Like, I don't care about Andalites. None of this defense was for Andalites. It was actually to keep Visser Three in morph out of his house because Visser Three has been trying to kill him for ages. Yeah. Because instead of being a good little minion, him and and Joe Bob, the the host, went from like a lowly telephone operator to to like inventing internet service providers. Basically, I don't know if V three um, wants to kill him yet, but he wants to torture him to find out because he knows that the, uh, yeah Joe yeah. Bob can survive without Candrona. So he's like, "What's You're right. your secret?" You're right. That's exactly it. But he knows that's that exactly once. It. Once his secret is out, Visser 3 will just kill him. Oh, yeah, right? they'll so just kill him because well. that's insane. Why are you going to kill yeah. your Yurk Empire in order to survive? I mean, that's Anyways. basically what Visser 3 does. I feel like Visser 3 <laughs> would be on board with this whole yeah. eating other Yurks plan yeah, 100%. Totally. I feel like but, any like, Visser would probably be down with that. I don't no, know. Visser, Visser 1, one. Like, that's I, sort Visser of their 1 bit. is way more practical. Um, Visser Anyways, just 1 to wrap, would definitely nope. eat other Yurks. Maybe you. Not. <laughs> Just to wrap up this plot summary, um, Jake is like, hey, like if you're ever not in this house, we'll fuck you up. And then Joe Bob lets out the... He lets Rachel and Axe go. Basically, there's like a big ellipses where they fine. They're fine now. Jake goes to school the next day. This is sort of irrelevant, but he's like, where's Cassie? And then he leaves class, skips his class, uh, and goes to find Gump. The kid, because he knows that's where Cassie is going to be. And uh, Cassie had basically morphed a wolf, thought spoken to this kid to tell him, like, don't confront your dad about being a yerk. Because obviously we know. Anyone about being a yerk. Yeah, we know that as soon as this kid opens his mouth, they'll turn him into a controller. Yeah. 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 And then Joe Bob will eat you. I was actually pretty. Joe Bob's millionaire will eat. That sounds like. Okay. That sounds that's, that's like a, new- an, a southern, like a southern, like a gothic, like a southern gothic legend. Oh, Joe Bob, school eat ya. Oh, you talk Joe to your Bob. daddy about yucks. Oh, job. Oh, Bob. Can we think of a cooler pronunciation for the last name? Oh, Fenestre. Fenestre. Like Fenestre. Yeah, it's like a Fenestre. villain's name. Oh, it's, that's what I always cool. thought. Yeah, Fenestre. Finistre. Anyways, uh, Fene- oh, Fenister's house. <laughs> yep. Fenister's house. Have access to America. All right. <laughs> Why? I dream of coming nice. to America. I was, so I was trying to remember what is that? What does that cartoon say? Like Wah. touch of my spaghetti. What touch of my spaghetti. <laughs> oh man, we are hitting all of the current memes in this all one. Right. Uh, uh, but it's I funny because Web funny. Access America is W A A, which is wah, wah which, which is, is Italian L-M. somehow. That's uh, anyways, wah, Luigi. Fen- <laughs> this has been the meme cast. I've been Mikhail. Uh, <laughs> Fenister's house <laughs> burns down, <laughs> but but he survives. So yeah. uh, the assumption there being like, okay, like he's probably wounded, like or like financially or whatever. Like he's not going to be killing a lot of people right away kind of thing Mm -hmm. and Um, i think we're supposed to feel better about that no i read it as like the house burned down so now jake can go and murder this man no i think it's implied that like 
it, it's like eh, we're supposed to feel better about Jake letting him go, knowing now that his house burnt down and he's crippled and like he might even die on his own. Yeah. I think that's no, the no, idea. No. I definitely, as a kid, I definitely read this as like his house burnt down, so now Finestri is okay. no longer safe. So now we can feel good because now the Animorphs have leeway to kill this man. Yeah, and not like, feel they're bad not going to do it. that. How would they find? They're him not going to do that. Yeah, I There's mean, so he's many Joe Bob problems. Finestre. How like? He's got the most recognizable face in the world. Yeah. Joseph Robert Fenestre. <laughs> a Joseph, a Robert, a Fenestre. Fenestre. And actually, this is a thing going on into discussion. Um, my th- the, my thought about like th- like they set his house on fire so they could kill him. That's a common one among the fandom. And um, Michael Grant himself has confirmed in a recent interview that, yeah, Jake is the one who set the fire and then murdered Joe Bob Finestra. Oh, but see, oh, thanks. Uh, Mikey Boy, he texted me after that yeah. interview and he's like, Tessa later is going to try to convince you using this primary source. Fuck her. Listen. listen. I lied about that whole thing God, just Michael, to fuck with her. Michael, Michael, you keep doing this for me? I know for sure you had time on Tuesday for coffee. So why, why the, the hell the did fuck? you cancel beforehand? <laughs> like, why did you make an excuse saying you had a meeting and cancel? Like, are you just like, am I just too much for you, man? Is my intensity just too much for you? Are you Wait, aghast Tessa? at my vampire fangs? Brayden, let me have a moment. You have them all the time. <laughs> yeah, because... Well, that's true. Uh, Tessa, you keep on... Okay, this is a call-out post. Tessa, oh, you keep fuck. on... You keep on, like saying shit like yo give me my moment you have yours all the time or like hey you get the you get the summaries wrong but like that's 80 percent of the point of this podcast i i hate to i'm not i'm the new guy when old viewers come old readers come in they want to hear like oh well i know everything now but i want to hear what this guy who has no idea what's going on pins to again like that Mm. thing about jake being in hell people know what that is now they actually know what that is it's entertaining to them that i think it's that it impressed upon me that it was hell wait wait (sighs) tessa he's gonna he's gonna say it at the end also tessa (laughs) the author is dead uh, but yeah, the, the author is dead. Um, it and also, you, you fucking got me there, Michael Brayden. Says. If only I could go back in time and wipe it. An- no, I can't do that. Animorphs <laughs> is mainly the reason I am who I am today. So speaking of... If only you could go back and wipe it away from your mom. <laughs> yeah. No, because then I would be like a cooler person, and who wants that? Well, not me. I definitely want to be the top clown in this trio. All right. Um, some discussion Kay. points. Yes. Axe Gorth is still, is the Generation Z who is too impatient with this slow-ass dial-up. Marco is the millennial who is rolling his eyes at baby, baby boomer Cassie because Cassie is like, I'm not a computer person. Excuse me. Help me, sir. Why do you invent new terms like cookies to explain internet things? Why can't you use words that haven't been invented yet? Thus, it's like, <laughs> Cassie, Which is why do you suck at this book? Logic. <laughs> specifically in this moment about wait, hating wait, wait. the internet i have something that ties into that which is a quote i found that a lot of people have passed around regarding this book but it's from an interview with applegate and she says yeah. i'll just read it quickly and she says when, when asked about the internet but she like, says do her, voice. Fra- do, do, her her voice, do her do her voice do her voice do her voice she says well, I'm afraid I have a fairly one-sided view. No, okay. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may I? May I? Uh, please. Uh, are you going to read it super slowly? Because it's no. going to take five minutes to read the whole thing. Okay. Well, I'm afraid I have a fairly one-sided view of the internet. No, no, that's not good. She might actually <laughs> listen to this and think we're like insulting. Can I put my okay. Catherine Sank on there? Well, Can I- I'm yeah, afraid yeah, yeah. I have a yeah. fairly one-sided view of the internet. I realize I'm using it right now. But aside from this sort of experience, yeah, no, somebody else take this. Okay, okay, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. (laughs) 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 Oh man, I just, I just saw her last week after Michael canceled on me for coffee. So, um, this is gonna be hot. Yeah, right. Uh, 
I'm afraid I have a fairly one-sided view of the internet. I realize I'm using it right now, but aside from the sort of experience, I find the web a huge disappointment. Oh my god, I'm, no. Okay, that's way that worse than reason? ours, even. I think Ted is fascinating, Barnes Noble. Anyways, basically, what the quotes... The, the, uh, to paraphrase, she says, like, I can find the information that's on the internet. I can find it a lot faster in a bookstore or a library. She says, as for chat rooms, th- basically, like, she's saying, like, trolls, like, have ruined chat rooms. Like, th- uh, chat rooms tend to sink rather quickly to the level of the lowest common denominator, which, given the anon- anonymity of the web, is pretty low. Then again, maybe I'm just old. Which... I feel like if we're drawing analogs between Cassie and Applegate and Marco and Grant, mm-hmm. that's Hard. pretty. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's good, right? That's pretty apparent. I think, yeah, I like it a lot. It's just, ugh. I I uh, also I cleared it with uh, Katie, Catherine. Yeah, uh, that I could read that quote. Nice on there. Nice. Yeah, and I will be getting royalties. Nice, just, dude. Oh, fuck nice. yeah. Uh, to, so to, well, I do have to pay off my private jet, which apparently Fenister takes to work every day. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> this just reminds like... me of that bit in like Toy Story 2 where the guy is ranting, I gotta drive all the way to work, every day, all the way to work. And he just like beelines 90 degrees across three lanes of traffic from his house to his work. Like, yep. that's what it feels like. I feel like Joe Bob is taking his jet for a half an hour in the air. <laughs> Lands it the on logistics top of, of the like building. getting a plane to take off every day like that just to fly one person—it's insane. Oh, yeah. I feel like no, yeah. he flies himself for sure. This oh, man yeah, has he's... got a pilot's license. I oh my god, there's no way. He's there's a no yerk. Way. He had experience with bug fighters before. To get a pilot's license, especially for a commercial airline or an airplane, you need like fucking—it's like fifty thousand hours flying or something like that. It's some insane number. Fifty thousand hours or fifty thousand dollars or fifty thousand hosts under your control. Anyways, um, or fifty thousand likes go- on Twitter, which he definitely has. Or f- <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> or fifty thousand words in thirty days. Hello, everyone, and welcome to NaNoWriMo podcast, the podcast about animorphs and National Novel Writing Month. Also, did you guys see the? Link I threw up there in the show notes, fighty seven 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 dot pro boards. I've got it open right com. now. Okay, I looked through quite a bit of it. It's not as good as you think. I thought it was gonna be like a role play, like total recreation of the Yerk board from the book. It's not, it's like a real anamorph forum that most of the threads are closed or you can't or, see it. But kind of thing. they're fairly recent, like twenty sixteen is them, a couple I mean, of I, these. If you want Which, to call that recent, yeah. I mean, like, I was expecting 2006. There's some that go back pretty far, like 2008, I think. Oh, I'm going to click on Mature Discussion. You can't see it. I tried that already. Fighty777. <laughs> I knew Fighty in real life. No, he's not Esplin9466 the lesser. What Wait, happened to see- him, I won't get into, so don't ask me. So who is way- Fighty? The only way that you can see the posts on there is if you're already a member. Did you sign up for it? No. It says welcome guest. I swear. Oh, yeah, oh okay. maybe they mean the Fighty person who like whose name is the thing. Brayden, that would she's make clearly sense. a yerk. She's clearly a yerk. Fuck oh, this. God, we gotta get I'm out pulling the ripcord. I'm pulling huh. the record. Pull the fucking cord. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> fuck, you guys, I forgot. I have my volunteering gig tonight. It's something I gotta do every couple of days. Um, it's with a really cool group. No issue. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally a really cool group. It's actually part of my religion, um, which is great, because oh, my religion God. is really open to vampires. Um, Are you trying to throw your go... religion under the bus right now? Because I'm mean, cool religion, with dude, that. Religion yeah. is... I'm not throwing anything under the bus. <laughs> What, what are you talking about? It's just a thing that I do, like, twice a week or so. Sometimes three times a week. Um, yeah, but we should wrap you, this up yeah. quick. Because uh, <laughs> okay, okay. I gotta feed. I mean, uh, get out of here. I totally ate already. What are we talking about anyway? Are we um, ready for... This is poop book number two, which is in itself another poop joke. Oh, like, yeah. this is like this... So, 
two poop books in a row. <laughs> oh, wait, I like that joke. Almost. That's funny. Right? Thank you. I yeah. thought it was good. I thought <laughs> of it today second. when I was making my notes, and I'm like, hey. Because <laughs> they have a really gross moment, and then, like, Axe doesn't get any of the toilet humor when, like, Tobias as a fly is in the toilet, and everybody's freaking out. He's like, I am horribly confused. It's like, Axe, it's that thing you're doing with your butt. Like, come on. Um, um, and, but yeah, so we, I don't know if we talked about it in book 14, but and- Andalite's pooping. Also, one real quick, uh, Joe Bob Finestra is worth $24.9 billion. Yeah. Remember when that used to be a lot of money? No, man, that's, that's still a ton of money. Jeff yeah, Bezos is, I mean. Jeff Bezos is currently worth one hundred fifteen point seven billion dollars. Who's Jeff Bezos? He's like the owner of Amazon. Oh, yeah, but. Amazon oh, runs yeah, at fair. a huge, like, it's a just like huge deficit. Twenty four point yeah. nine used to be the most, like the the highest, like that was the most money, and now we've well, quadrupled it in twenty years. I wonder what the owner of like Comcast is worth. You know what I mean? Yeah, because essentially also, that's according to Forbes, not really any sort of. It was was it Forbes? Insight I just I literally his, just googled it. And was like Jeff Bezos' net worth? Yeah, I yeah. It's provided by Forbes. Me, Wikipedia doesn't lie. Um, I also let's. I think we need to do an OTP alert for this one because okay. OTP alert. Yeah, there's a lot. Jake's there's a lot. Parents, happening. they hold their hands like oh, they're God. on a date. God damn Enough it. with okay. the parents. Okay, Tessa, married parents that were already together <laughs> and married before a series starts are not OTPs. OTP alert! Don't, don't, don't bother. Anyways, the Rachel Co. update, because yeah. this is why all yeah. my listeners are here anyways. Uh, there's a point where uh, I think, yeah, they were basically like, R- Rachel was kidnapped as a bird, and they're like, well, her time's running out. And Jake was like, well, shit, I know Rachel. She's not going to morph out and reveal, like, that, like, basically give away the secret that the Animorphs are human. So instead, she's going to stay as a bird forever. And that's even worse somehow. Yeah. And Tobias is like, you know, it wouldn't be so bad to be a bird forever. And Marco's like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, not, fuck what that. Tobias says was that that might not be the worst case scenario, which is, like, oh. a, so understandable what for what Marco assumes it is but tobias is talking about like yeah what if she's like dead or like is fucking almost dead or horribly injured and can't fly and it's like but i mean forever also the real otp alert is like marco's reaction right that's yeah. true. like he's like yep. don't take away <laughs> this person that means the world to me I mean, Tobias, I, when they found out that Tobias was a bird, Marco wasn't like, oh, God. Yeah, but, but Tobias you, never, Rachel like, did. landed on his shoulder, and Marco never got to rub his head against him. So also, they didn't have that it's moment. kind of fucking, like, it establishes that all of these kids were pretty distant from each other. Like, Cassie and Rachel were kind of friends, like, before mm-hmm. book one. And they then were best Mike friends, and Rachel too. were cousins. Yeah. And then, and then we have Tobias, who's outside of both friend groups. He's this, and he's this like passed around orphan, like shut in, latchkey kid. And then, <laughs> and then within days of really getting to know him, he becomes a bird. And that's when he's starting to be. He, that's when he starts this relationship, quote unquote, with Rachel. And that's like, that's fucking nonsense. That's off. It's, it's fucked. It's just something I thought about a little while ago. And it, it just means Rachel and Tobias are written to be together. Marco and Rachel belong together oh god i'm crying tears of joy <laughs> hearing this okay but like Tessa's crying tears of rage it's literally i mean okay like i, I i've i've always agreed with you michael uh, mikhail whoa uh, that's i've talked to michael grant too much i was gonna call you by his name for a second <laughs> sorry to both of you uh, i but say I've always michael's agreed with name you, mikhail, a lot in bed as well 
that um <laughs> like also the Rachel and dead. Tobias are not a good match together, but yeah. I still find their pairing very interesting because they're trying so hard for it because they both want to cling to something kind of normal. Um and it's just it's a tragedy. Like it's never gonna end happily. Oh my god. Um, but like in this book, there's a literal quote where Jake is like, I don't know if Rachel and Marco actually like each other, like if they mm. if they make fun of each other but secretly yeah. like each other yep. or if they oh, just yeah. can't stand each other. And yep. he's like, Whoa, Catherine you guys you're, knows Michael your flirt. She's... Also, oh. that makes me think think of something. R- t- Tessa, you saying, Oh, Rachel and Tobias, they're like trying to be they're like doing all this this stuff, this kitschy romantic stuff, even though Tobias is a bird and they're in a war where they change into animals because they want to keep something normal. Yeah. And it makes me think, what if like, what if Rachel knows that? What if Rachel like may- maybe at first was into it or like maybe never was. And now she's just like got this, quote unquote thing with Tobias because she realizes like oh my god if I stop if I stop like teeny bop flirting with this bird boy that's it he's gone he's dead Ooh. or he is gonna he's he's dead or Dark. just gonna perma bird I mean I think he I think she does like him but I think she likes him for kind of the wrong reasons like he has a dark past she the most upsetting thing that's happened to her in her life was that her parents had a rather amicable divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, like, they, they speak coldly to each other, but they still speak. And, like, she gets to see her dad often. Um, so I think she's drawn to this kind of, like, broken backstory. And then he also lives as a hawk and is, like, very bloodthirsty. And that's that kind of darkness that she is weirdly interested in being a teenage girl. So... But as we go further on in the series, there are a lot of scenes, now that I'm thinking about it, that kind of support this theory that Rachel doesn't know if she, like, maybe she maybe she does like Tobias, or maybe she's tricking herself into liking Tobias. But there's mm-hmm. a couple of scenes that happen where it's like they're forcing it, and they're obviously forcing it to be together, to be quote-unquote normal. Fuck also, yeah. the boxes One we've got done, in the Brayden. chat look like I, a little penis. I won the podcast. I, <laughs> Brayden wins. Cool. 100 right. points to Brayden. Um, unfortunately, I think we could easily do... Well, it's not unfortunate that we could easily do two episodes about this one book because mm-hmm. uh, there's like so much wild shit that happens in it. We had, didn't really even talk about the technology stuff that much, but unfortunately, we're running out of time. Mm-hmm. And as a result, I need Brayden to hit me with some quick predictions for number oh, right, 17, right, right, which right. we'll read uh, two weeks from now. And the, it's Rachel. Rachel. And the cover text is... Oh, it's the pink Oh, one. it's called The Underground. The cover text is, there's nothing to fear but the Yurks themselves, which is Ooh. pretty terrible. I one. feel like they've used this tagline before with the actual fear thing, though. Okay. Next week, in our bi-weekly episode of Live from the Gardens, we'll be talking about... Uh, some trivia about the housefly and the rhino. And then after that, we'll talk about Animorphs number 17, like we just said. Okay, I see a bat. There are some stairs. Um, They're going to go underground. It looks like a yerk pool. Maybe it's a secret secondary yerk pool. I, they're going to try to attack another yerk pool, but from a different angle. They're going to try to, like, commando it this time. See, I can't actually remember what happens in this book, and I feel that would have been my prediction, too, actually. Honestly, because that's pretty much what it looks like. And until then, you can find more of our stuff on our podcast page at collectivelegacy.org or on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Facebook. And check out some of the other podcasts we got on Collective Legacy. Uh, We just got a new one, Wang Talk Radio. It's pretty cool. You know what? I found out it was pronounced Wang Wang Talk. Wang Wang. Wow, yeah. talk radio. Like a duck. <laughs> it's a great show. <laughs> Highly <laughs> recommend. I really like it. I'm watching I'm listening to the one uh where he talks with a tattoo artist. Remember to like, subscribe to those things. It really does help, you know, it gets it up there. 
um, in the algorithms which all of these new websites use. Uh, the Animorphs did not predict that. For the Phanomorphs, my name is Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the expert. And I'm Brayden. Um, I forget the bit I did earlier, so I can't do it again. Just say that you'll burn someone's house down again. Oh, you did it God, to me. Yes. That played really well when I showed the police. Now, wait yeah. a minute. Now, wait a minute. You already burned down your own house. <laughs> hey, okay. No, and no. this has been Phanomorphs, the Dork Bajir Chronicles. Good night. If you're looking for more Phanomorphs content, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search for Phanomorphs. The Dork Bajir Chronicles. Hello everyone, my name is Jared and this is and this and this is Two Nerds in a Basement. Once a week, me and another nerd watch one of the over 70 movies put out by Marvel or DC Comics over the last 50 years and talk about them for far too long. Can we can we just take a moment to address the fact that uh, Howard the Duck looks like martin sheen you just wanted jimmy else to torture scene just, right <laughs> something don't just shoot him in the head like string him up by his toenails and just go to town on him he's just got this scratchy voice it's so annoying what's our solution to nuclear warfare 10 year olds it's like i want to be a witch i want to ex- explore the black magics and you get the aesthetic of your dreams right i went i went straight to the boob grabbing hang on <laughs> hang on let me let me get there Brought to you by Collective Legacy, a podcast network.